Did you know that a change that Elemis made in 2021 has resulted in saving 13 tons of unnecessary paper waste? Hello, if you are new here, my name is Stacy. I'm in my mid 40 things Elemis. I will have timestamps down below on different categories of what I'm gonna talk about. So what is Elemis? It is a skincare brand. They are based in England and all their products are made in England. What are some of the things that are important to the brand? Number one, skin wellness. Their products are about the science and about working to protect your skin and to maintain a healthy skin. Proven results, every new Elemis product is put through a very rigorous test and they want to make sure that all the active ingredients are living up to what the claims are. Feel good skincare. They really want to take a holistic approach to skincare. There is some aromatherapy benefit. They don't add fragrances in, but just the natural ingredients does give some of the products a fragrance. And transparency. All of their products are developed and manufactured in England, so they have, you know, control over the quality and everything like that since it's right there. Is Elemis cruelty free? Okay. This, you know, you would say is just a yes or no question. Well, there's more to it. <laughs> With a lot of brands, there's more to cruelty-free than just yes or no. Elemis does say on their website that they are committed to no animal testing. However, as you read further down on the next paragraph, it does state that they do sell in China. This could be a whole separate video to talk about like the cruelty-free in China and stuff. I have an old video on it, but the laws are changing. I'll put up on the screen the statement from their website, but basically it is sold in China and the Chinese authority do require some testing kind of from one-offs. Not that every product is, but they may be subject to random post-market sampling. So that for that reason, my eyes I don't put them as a cruelty free brand they are also owned by La Octane who is not cruelty free either Elemis is helping and trying to get the laws changed in China so we can cross our fingers there has been some slow movement over the last couple of years so hopefully one day it will not be a thing whether a brand is cruelty free or not there is a lot on the history, so I'm going to put up a timeline on the screen as I am talking. I'm not going to go through every single year as the bullet point that's up on the screen. So in 1989, Elemis was founded in London by Linda Steiner. Her goal was to create a skincare range close to nature as possible. Then she was joined by the co-founding trio Noella, Gabrielle, Sean Harrington, and Orly Frank. And in 1994, I found this very interesting, Elemis launched a spa and retail on board cruise ships. In 2001, they opened a flagship day spa in London. In 2003, their Pro Collagen Marine Cream launched. That is a gel-like texture. In 2006, they had some patents. In 2015, they continued to launch more products, more treatments in their spas. In 2016, the Superfood Collection was launched. In 2018, they had expansion in the U.S. with 600 Alta stores. And I found that this was interesting. In 2019, they became the exclusive first-class amenities provider on British Airways. And in 2019 is when they were acquired by La Octane for $900 million. In 2020, they did the industry-leading no-touch facial, which was offering maximum results with minimum touch. I would have to assume that that was based on what was started happening in 2020. And as you can see, they have won a ton of awards. I didn't even include all the awards in this list. Over the years, they have won a ton. So now to the really exciting part for me, well, the products too, but I do have some products that Elemis did send me over to try. There was no obligation whatsoever to do a video, a post, nothing. It was pure gifting just to say, hey, try it out. And when I first opened the box for the balm, 
a couple of the balms that I've tried in the past did have a little spatula with it. So when I opened this one, at first I thought, hmm, you know, their price point's a little higher. I'm surprised there's not a spatula with it. That's on purpose. And now I went from being disappointed that there wasn't one to happy that there wasn't one. And thinking about that little plastic spatula that comes in balms, now I have... I just did not think about this before, and so now I think about it completely different. They estimate by removing that little plastic spatula, they have saved 1.7 tons of plastic, and that is based on their average annual sales. So just from removing that little spatula, 1.7 tons of plastic waste. Another thing that I noticed was absent in their packaging, but this one I was just like, whatever is the little leaflet. You know how when you open the package of something and a lot of times take out the product and there is that little folded leaflet? I don't know about you, maybe I'm the only one, but I never read it. I set it aside and if I need something, I look on the box, the product itself, or I look online. So they, they made the decision in 2021 to take out that leaflet. It's no longer included with any of their products. And they estimate that that saves 13 tons of unnecessary paper waste. In 2021, they also made the decision to no longer ship their products with bubble wrap. They now do protective paper wrap for their online sales. So that is good. I know FabFitFun went to that too, and I've never had a problem with things coming busted or anything on that. It is estimated by making that move from bubble wrap to the paper wrap that that saves 11 tons of plastic. And this is the box, look how cute it is. This is the box that it came in when they sent it to me. So they're promotional materials. They are focused on fully being fully recyclable. And their paper and cardboard packaging that they do use is, is sourced from certified sustainable forest. And they use that in a mix of recycled products. Their tubes, they also have included, it's the recycled, it's called PCR, but it is, I forget exactly what that stands for, but it is basically recycled plastics. This is exciting news. Last year, they launched two refillable products. So it looks like they are going to be testing that out. The Mayfair Number no. 9 Hand and Body Lotion and then the Mayfair Number no. 9 Hand and Body Soap. Both of those products are refillable. From an article that I found, it sounds like that's kind of the test, you know, to see how those products do. And then hopefully they'll maybe figure out a way to expand that program. And they do have some goals to continue improving on being more sustainable. By 2025, they want all their operational sites to be using 100% renewable electricity. And this is definitely good. I'm assuming it says by 2023, I'm assuming by the end of it, they want to ensure full traceability of the country of origin of the finished raw materials. So that is excellent. I don't know if you are aware, but there has been some things like uh, they don't have mica in their stuff, but a lot of our eyeshadows, if they have shimmer, they have mica. And there has been talk on how that raw material is coming to be in our products, like how it's mined. Now, let's get into talking about some products. First up, I'm gonna talk about, this is the Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. Here is what it looks like. This is 100 grams and it retails for $66, yellow in color. It is described as having notes of mimosa, sweet orange, juniper, and meadow sweet. And it, yeah, it definitely has like that floral, almost musky scent. It's not real overpowering, but it definitely is there. I personally like clean, floral, musky scents more than kind of the earthy scents, whereas my mom likes more of their earthy scents than the scents that I do. So she didn't really, she liked how this felt on. I had her try it. She is in her 70s and she liked how it felt on and how it cleaned but she didn't really care for the scent all that much. She liked more their superfoods. This is the superfood facial oil that we'll talk about, but their superfoods line, I feel like that smells a little bit more earthy and the container can be recycled. I do like how uh, for each of the products on their website, if you scroll down, it does tell you 
exactly what codes each of the like pieces are. That way you can check your local recycling to make sure that they do recycle that number. Because I know in some areas, like different places that I've lived, there's different recycled codes of you know material that certain places will accept. I'm gonna put it on and you're gonna warm it up in your palms and then apply it in circular massage motions. Then you dampen your fingertips and continue to you know, massage it in and then you rinse it off. And the makeup just kind of starts to melt off. Very hydrating, very soft. Yeah, like, I mean, I can kind of still smell it, but it is described as like an English countryside is how they describe it. And a little does seem to go a long way. Now I never use balms to remove my eye makeup. I always use a separate one for that. This does not say that you can use it for eyes. For treatment, you can leave this on for 10 minutes before rinsing it off. And this has a 12 month shelf life. Next, let's talk about the Dynamic Resurfacing Facial Pads, Skin Smoothing Pads. And this is what this container looks like. This retails for 60 pads is $60, for 14 pads is $24. And here is what they look like inside of the container. Recommended to use this twice a day. The purpose of these is to gently exfoliate, remove dead skin cells, which leaves your skin looking smoother and brighter. The pads themselves can be recycled. It looks like very thin and there's some bumpiness, you know, to it that's built into it. It's kind of like a quilted, you know, raised. And then you're just going to go like that. Now these I did not notice a scent to at all. So you just in a circular motion on your face and neck area and then you do not rinse this off and again these can be recycled and the container. And I didn't really start using facial oils probably until last year. I have very dry skin, I'm in my mid 40s and now I am a believer of facial oils. Absolutely love them. My skin always just feel so hydrated and so like plump. This is 15 milliliters and it retails for $59. This is the Superfoods Facial Oil. You massage three to four drops over your face and your neck. So this will be after you cleanse, but before you put on moisturizer. Now the Superfoods line, that is formulated, it says with nine superfoods, including broccoli, rosehip, flaxseed, and some kind of radish, and that's to feed the skin and non-greasy, so it does have a scent. Yeah, and I would describe this one as more earthy, like I mentioned before. It is a clear serum, or clear oil. Rub it in, and yeah, it just is so, it's not greasy, but it's so hydrating. So it's already soaked into my skin. This is a glass bottle that you can rinse out and recycle. And then a product that has won many, many awards is the Pro Collagen Marine Cream. This is an anti-wrinkle day cream. This size right here is 50 milliliters. It's 1.6 fluid ounce. This is pricey, okay? I'm not gonna lie, it's pricey is $152. You can, if you just wanna try it out, you can get a 15 milliliters for $48, 30 milliliters for 89, and I think it smells good. Out of all of the products, this one is the scent that I like the best. Of course, the most expensive one, right? It's what I like the best. <laughs> I would describe it as like a clean scent. It's very lightweight, but it does pack some hydration on there says that within the first hour of applying, it quenches your thirsty skin and increases hydration. I do feel like it does make a difference. Now, whether it is worth it for you, obviously that has to be your call, whether you want to spend the money on, you know, a moisturizer or cream. If you're thinking about it and you've been, you know, hesitant, maybe try the smaller size and see what you think. But I do think that it did give my skin hydration. I will say that is the nice thing that yes, they are pricey and I'm not trying to like push pricey items on you or anything. I don't have an affiliate code or anything like that. But I have noticed so far that a little does go a long way. I don't need that much of this cream to feel hydrated. 
since these are so pricey and there are a lot of options when you look on their website, that I feel like it could very be very easy to be overwhelmed and like, okay, what product is for me and I don't want to spend all this money and then I pick the wrong thing. You can book a virtual consultation for free with them online. Why not do that? It's free to do. If you have points or rewards from other programs, it is available on other places that you can buy it. Like I mentioned, it's on their website, of course, but you can also buy it online at Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, Macy's, which I know that Macy's has sales. I don't know if particularly on Elmas, but they have sales a lot. Alta, so maybe this is something that would be great to save your points for. Amazon, QVC. QVC is a great place because I know that they have specials all the time on a variety of products. Revolve, Derm Store, Time So Spa, Lovely Skin, Skin Store, Look Fantastic, and Skincare RX. So definitely a numerous places that you can look for the product. Now, did you know about their efforts on being sustainable? And does it make a difference to you? I'm just curious. If you're looking to purchase skincare, is that something that you would either seek out knowing or now that you know if a brand is doing things to be more sustainable versus a brand that isn't, if you are aware of that, is it going to make a difference with your purchasing decision if the reviews for both products are, yes, they both are good and like the price point similar, does it make a difference? Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.